Steve, are you ready? <laughs> you just resting? T-Rex, are you ready? Uh, jump three times if you're ready, okay? One and a two and a three and a, I think that's it. I'm ready. Yeah, let's go. Oh, it feels like the sauna out here today. When a cold front is not really a cold front is what's going on in Boston right now. It's about 6 a.m., 73, 74 degrees. So we've reversed it the last several days since last week's flood. The coolest weather has been here near Boston and it's been warmest in the Champlain Valley. Well, this morning it's in the mid 70s in Eastern Massachusetts while it's in the mid 60s in the Champlain Valley. So yeah, it was a, a cold front for Northern New England yesterday, but in Southern New England, it was a rain making stationary front is what it's evolved into now. There's the surface analysis from eight o'clock this morning and it shows the front just kind of stalled over Southern New England. It did rain when I was just waking up with the birds a little while ago, it was raining. That's not due in the grass. We've got wet grass uh, because of a shower that just went through. The radar shows that rain, for the most part, taken off to the east of New England. There may be some more redeveloping. Uh, check the rain gauge here. I would say it's probably less than a tenth. Uh, yeah, uh, point zero six. Very different story though, where those storms set up and stalled yesterday overachieving rains. I haven't seen the cocoa rise yet, so hopefully I'll find that and add it in. Uh, the evidence though, that comes from another contributor, John Lowell, Johnny Oyster as we call him on Cape Cod, shared this from about six o'clock. He said it was raining cats and dogs and uh, his driveway turned into a bit of a river. And so he had a stream going right through his property, around his house, not in his house. Way to go, John. And this water is feeding into the Depot River there in Beckett, Massachusetts, which feeds into the west branch of the Westfield River. So those storms, particularly heavy, I don't know how, how much lightning or thunder there was, but he said it was just torrential rain of one to two inches per hour for hours yesterday. And although I haven't seen them yet, here are some of the reports of flash flooding in orange. Again, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, so hard hit. Someone asked me to comment about New Jersey having a very hot summer. Yes, because these fronts have been coming into New England, but stalling along I-95 where you don't get the cooler weather. You just get the front stalling with the hot weather and day after day of these thunderstorms. I can't remember the last day without any flash flooding somewhere in the Northeast. On Sunday, we did not have flooding here in New England, but there was flooding off to our Southwest. Uh, thank you, John, for contributing there. And thank you, Benicula, commenting on my YouTube about the difference between a snowy egret and a great egret. I've been mistaking them uh, for some time. Now, what do we have right here? Did I say that right? Snowy egret has a black bill and yellow feet. I can't tell. It looks like a black bill, but it looks smaller than the one yesterday. So I have a lot to learn. And egrets are heron. And I think that uh, <laughs> you got your great egret, you got your snow egret, you got your great blue heron. And I have more to learn. And I really appreciate advice from my viewers helping me. Uh, the forecast for today is for cooler and drier air in northern New England. But in southern New England, where this front has stalled, there is a heat advisory now in effect for today with the temperature close to 90 and a dew point in the 70s. That puts your heat index up near 100 degrees. Uh, so it's a hot day. Now I have to commute over to the Blue Hill, which is right over there, and teach again day two of year 14 of launch your meteorology career. And guess where my laptop is that I do all my weather research and editing with? It's right over there at the Blue Hill Observatory. I think I can just make out the tower right there, right in the center, that little tower. I think that one might be Blue Hill. And then Granite Link's over there. No, I think Blue Hill's actually more over in this direction, right over there. So that would be the east side of the Blue Hills Reservation. And that hill intercepts the view looking from the top of Blue Hill to over here at my house, which is where we're going to conclude the end more. But we're not done because we got to go out another door. Matt Douglas is going to open the Blue Hill Observatory door for me early and I continue this out there.
in a moment, like right now. This is a little different. We drove up into the fog here in Eastern Massachusetts, elevation just over 600 feet. Let's go out the door up there. I wanna see some weather instruments. All right, 7.30, relocated. I don't like to ship out the hatch of the roof of the historic, beautiful Blue Hill Weather Observatory, where I just spoke with Matt. He picked up also 0 0.06 inches of rain. There are the weather instruments down there and up there, and we are in the fog. And Matt says, all those mornings I've been talking about that low stratocumulus, it has been cloudy up here at an elevation of 600 feet. A light breeze from the south, southwest. And uh, the, the students are gonna be showing up here in a few minutes, so I really gotta get this done quickly. Rainfall amounts, someone wanted me to talk about New Jersey. Rainfall amounts of six and a half inches of rain in northern New Jersey, just west of New York City. Another night or another day of flash flooding yesterday. And in that region that we had the flash flooding there in western Massachusetts, the surface obs are only showing one to two inches, but I'm sure there were localized amounts of two to four based on the uh, imagery that uh, John Lowell has been sharing. And uh, incidentally, John Lowell shares the sunrise today from Beckett, <laughs> the morning after the heavy rain. Grass is green in western Massachusetts. Too much rain last night and yesterday. And then also Eric in Epson, New Hampshire is elated that he had some rain on the roof last night. He said his top two inches of soil in the garden had turned to dust, and it was so nice to pick up a little bit of rain. Now, Epsom looks like it was on the southern edge of a heavier batch of rain that crossed from Lake Winnipesaukee into Maine with a few amounts of uh, more than an inch of rain there in southwestern Maine and the lakes of New Hampshire, so that's nice. And here at the uh, Blue Hill, also 0 .06, I think I already said that. And the 10-day meteogram for Boston shows temperatures only in the mid-80s, only in the mid-80s, but the dew points are in the low 70s. And according to the Euro, this cloud is evaporating for a sunny day today. So beach weather, wind is from the southwest on this side of the front. The front stalled right over us here. So I don't expect much wind when you have a stalled front and you expect the possibility of a shower or a thunderstorm. But I guess that's supposed to stay south of us. And then pretty much steady as she goes, it looks like the Rain for southern New England returns again on Thursday with this sort of warm front, cold front that's coming at us on Thursday. Dew point still in the 70s, so copious amounts of rain possible localized on Thursday. Friday, uh, the front is right over us, and now the uh, guidance has shifted back to where we were several days ago with nice lower humidity coming in on Saturday. Uh, the dew point actually falling into the upper 50s. Temperatures goes into the upper 70s and low 80s, and uh, it's still a, a fairly warm air mass, so I think at the south coast will probably still be well into the 80s, while in northern New England probably only 70s. And then uh, up and down after that next week, we'll get those interesting features we talked about yesterday for a possible uh, mesoscale convective system, one on Sunday and one on Wednesday. So let's go to now the graphics and see how that works out. Uh, this is the Euro on pivotalweather.com. And the front is stalled with a few showers possible today from Connecticut to Cape Cod, where the clouds are going to kind of be stuck here. And then tomorrow, it looks like we're kind of in between systems with the front that's on us now kind of completely decaying and the energy shifting to another front coming across Ontario in the Midwest. And Thursday, here come the showers and downpours, low pressure going to our north. And then this is a tough one to believe. I'm not sure if I believe this. Then the front is going to come south through here on Friday those kinks in the isobars without too much rain. I would expect at least a spot shower or thunderstorm on Friday. Remember, that was the day we were talking about for possibly some more big thunderstorms. And then Saturday, uh, mercy, mercy, the high pressure comes a little further south in the last few runs, and we're having a, a low humidity day. Enjoy 12 hours of low humidity if this is right on Saturday. Uh, it could be a nice day. I say could be a nice day. You don't know where that front's going to really end up. And then on Sunday, the system that was supposed to kind of roar across New York and central New England now, the euro has shifted it to along the south coast of New England with possible heavy weather, maybe a mesoscale convective system from Connecticut to Cape Cod. So this is totally moving target for Sunday. It's also faster, and that's out of here on Monday. And then on uh, Tuesday, we get the warm air coming back, and then the heat is really going to be expanding across the middle of the nation. Uh, next Wednesday into Thursday. Now, what's that? The 24th. We'll stop it here at 240 hours, and we are in the 570 thickness. I'm happy that some of the viewers are researching what that means. 570 decameters is warm enough for 90 uh, if you get uh, west, west wind, and then you see the, the 570. Six, the 582, now we're talking the possibility of 100 degrees. Remember, you can kind of add 20 
uh, to those last two numbers. So 82, 582 thickness there uh, coming across Ohio would be 102. And you have these fronts continuing to cascade across southern Canada. So with that kind of building heat in the middle of the nation and the kind of cool that's available in Canada, more potential flash flooding off and on. But at least now it doesn't show that uh, mesoscale convective system for us next Wednesday, but that's going to be a moving target. It actually showed it going across Ohio and to Virginia, but that'll happen really fast. Okay, so that's it. I got to try and edit this. The kids are going to be here in a short time. So interesting being up in the fog here at the elevation of 637 feet plus, and there's a... Um, Houghton's Pond down there reflecting the gray sky and a lot of people walk up here and check it out and the Enmore from yesterday starting off in Weymouth and then ending up here well actually coming up to the roof talking about the maximum wind gust of uh, 110 miles per hour in 1942 and then closing it out uh, with Steve and our sunset in Weymouth and thank you very much for the contributes, uh, contributions uh, John Lowell in Beckett what's the wind doing at your house right now I don't know I need another anemometer Extreme performance anemometry is up here. Mayor Pam, which one is yours? Paul Maravellis has web uh, uh, anemometers all over the place. I want one. And more, 7.30 a.m., really interesting sky. The low overcast is breaking and decidedly different wind direction today. That old high pressure system to the east has lost its grip. So now we get air from the south and southwest. And as it begins to mix down, you can really make out the uh, different texture of the Willy Waz and the last of the glassy water from a very calm sunrise. We'll get the crews back at it in the Gulf of Maine and the big dig. And I'm going that way. Look at the sunshine. Look at that. You can see the sunshine out there on the horizon. That would be uh, Boston University area. And then also over there at Granite Links. That's the uh, east side of the Great Blue Hills Reservation. I'm going to the Great Blue Hill. Blue sky on the way to the Great Blue Hill. And oh, how I missed commuting on Route 128 <laughs> or even getting there. And we've achieved 600 feet at the Great Blue Hill with sunshine. Oh, it's going to be a warm one. And there's always an eventful weather event or two or three or four or five during this week, including potentially today. Lunchtime update, the fact that it's not sunny means that the air is a little more stable than it would be otherwise. And we have lunch brought to us by Shake Shack. They brought the whole table and burgers and lemonade. This is awesome. This feels like Florida. It's a great picnic lunch. Oh, thank you guys so much. Never a dull moment in the Blue Hill Weather Observatory room with Matt and Amanda don't have to be on, but look at all this fancy stuff. But, oh, we just had a severe thunderstorm warning pop up over Burlington, Vermont, or down, up and down. Sorry about that. Let's see what that does again. And then that would be the yellow. I guess uh, that must be a longer range radar up there. Looks like we have a watch for severe weather there in northern New England, and we also have Flash flood warnings in effect in Western Massachusetts, Pioneer Valley, same places a couple days ago, and Connecticut. So another day with flash flood warnings and severe storms. And of course, Pennsylvania, every day in Pennsylvania. Uh, facing into the wind. Now the students haven't signed release forms, so I can't show them close up, but there's 19 great young future meteorologists. And there's always interesting weather when this happens. Uh, we have severe weather now, as you just saw on the radar, off to the west. And... Uh, we have still enough southerly influence that it should be a more stable atmosphere, atmosphere here in eastern New England to prevent severe weather. Uh, the front's gonna just limp in here. The front's actually stalling in western New England. So you see all these anemometers here. And back in 1942, on July 14th, there was a wind gust to 110 miles an hour. Actually, one of the anemometers registered 123 miles per hour, but they estimated that it broke and started malfunctioning around 110 miles an hour in a thunderstorm on July 14th, 1942. And here are the notes, the handwritten notes from the observers that day. They talk about how the thunderstorm first showed up to the west and then the core of the storm missed Blue Hill to the south. They didn't have that much lightning direct hit, but they could see the worst of the lightning off to the south. Observations from of 1942, so 83 years ago. Just amazing. The history here at the Blue Hill Observatory. 
All right, time to go back and see the kids and maybe do some gardening. Hope this audio sounds, it sounds all right. Can't quite see my house because it's kind of over behind one of those hills. I think that hill right there that's illuminated by the sun. You can just make out the top of uh, Granite Links, I believe, over there. Or is that Granite Links over there? Either way, we can see Granite Links from the house, but not this part of the Blue Hill. And also, no indoor plumbing. We got bouse houses because there's a big dig going on at the top of Blue Hill. A new septic system going on. Going in here. Wow, it's hot. Let's go check out the big dig in Weymouth. I think they were doing some repairs. Just past 6 o'clock, we're back with the kids. Temperature in the lower 80s. T-Rex, what are you doing? Where's that ball? And here's some osprey hunting. I'm not sure where they are. And those storms in western Massachusetts kind of training and back building. So flooding continues. Parts of southwestern New England where that flood watch was issued this morning. Steve has got his position on the table. And I think the southerly wind resulted in many of us not getting quite to 90, but certainly a warm, stormy day again in New England. Although... Steve McGettrick just sent this image from East Dennis, C Street Beach. Oh, love how the tide goes out there on the north side of Cape Cod. Thanks, Steve McGettrick family for that. Rubbing it in from Cape Cod with some time off. Well deserved, no doubt. We'll let the sun get below the cloud a little bit. And Steve's little cat house, that carpet that's been dry and has to go back in because there's a slight chance it ends up raining around here. Slight chance. Was that good? Feeling a little peppy now? <laughs> Happy hour for the kitty. Look at this work boat towing this sled of some kind. I remember asking last year. No idea. No, do not. Saved you the little bird. It's a baby. No going after the baby birds. I just shortened his line so he couldn't get in there. It's your last day here. Oh, who put the water under there, Mommy? Carpet's going back inside. We'll have to get you a cat house. Just got a video from Johnny Oyster. John Lowell in Beckett, Massachusetts. He says it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Those storms just stalled out there. I thought they'd be a little more progressive. They're just sitting there over from the mid-Atlantic states up to 